Coming up, my top three from this video. Let's see where I rank them. Welcome to KDX Bricks Analytics, where I watch all the Lego investing and reselling videos so that you don't have to. So let's jump right into it. We are back looking at the same table that we looked at in my video from exactly a week ago. That video was part one, and this video is part two on this table, even though I didn't label that first video as part one. That'll definitely be confusing, so we'll have to work through that. But if you are unfamiliar with what this data table is and how I got this data, go watch that video. I explain it real quick. In the part one video, we talked about all the sets that got mentions in the last two week period, June 1st to June 15th, 2023, that are expected to retire at the end of this year. And in this part two video, we're going to talk about all the sets that got mentions but are not expected to retire at the end of this year. With that criteria, first set on the list is 75290, the Moss Isley Cantina. I'm gonna go through a lot of these sets very quickly, but not this one. I'm gonna spend an extra minute on this one because I am very biased. I love this set. Mine is right over there off screen. It's the $400 Master Builder series. It came out in October of 2020. It only has 3,187 pieces, but it does have 21 minifigures and almost half of them are exclusive. But all also, it has a 4.6 on brick set with 472 ratings. And then looking at my table, it got two more mentions in the last two weeks, and it has an enthusiasm score of 2.6. I love this set. Again, I am biased, but I do think it will do well in retirement. It will be a long hold time because it is going to have over four years on the shelves. But I am quite okay with that because this set is amazing. The cantina opens up. The bar looks fantastic. All the minifigures and the detail. There's a nice close up. Look at those alien minifigures figures and the painted silver pieces for the bar tap structure and of course the bartender in there is awesome and then here's a picture of the band and of course Han over there and the booths excellent set my favorite scene in all of the Star Wars movies and shows one quick thing to point out is that if we look at all of the minifigures on Brick Economy Right now, they're adding up to about $240 already. Not too bad. Of course, we would expect the bulk of the resellability of this set to be the minifigures. Like Labria is already around $22. Here's mine. Love the little horns. They're kind of that rubbery material, but great looking bad guy minifigure. And then scrolling down further, here's my Sand Trooper, almost $20 with the orange shoulder cape, but that is a really good looking sand trooper with all that detail and then my favorite of the set and of course it is also the most valuable of the set garandon who looks great with that snout and if you take the hood off oops i dropped that piece but you can see that it is a kind of neck snout piece that looks really good and of course the gray color with the black hood and the black cape fits him perfectly so great many figures in this set i don't see lego making this set really ever again a lot of people are saying probably not for a very long time i don't see it in this scale and in this detail and in this size ever again next up on the list is 75344 boba fett starship micro fighter scrolling down on the table one more mention up to nine with an enthusiasm score of 2.3 this set was on the retirement list now it's not so we'll have at least a two-year shelf life it's a ten dollar micro fighter micro fighters historically have done well on retirement return on investment, but you got to sell a lot of them to make some good money on it. What I love about this set is that it is one of the few micro fighters where the minifigure actually fits inside of the ship itself, which I think is a very nice bonus. And I love the minifigure, even though the minifigure is not really proper when it comes to the color of the jetpack and the helmet and the chest plate area. The production, assuming that the actual manufacturing production is really well done, it looks great. The details on the arms and the legs and the toes and the hips and the chest and the helmet looks really fantastic. Next up on the table is one more mention up to nine for Captain Rex helmet with an enthusiasm score of 2.6. I love the helmets for investing and reselling, so I'm excited about this set. Another set that was expected to retire but now is not is this one Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone. One more mention with an enthusiasm score of 2.3. This is not my favorite set. A lot of people are getting more excited about it because of the new Sonic play sets, which are pretty good and they do have some pretty good minifigures in those sets, but this one only has one. I am biased on this one, but it reminds me too much of 
of the Mario play sets, which were great for kids and play, but not great for investing and reselling. And also if it reminds you of a diorama set, well, there's really no backdrop to it. I think it's kind of thin in that regard. Not my favorite set, even though a lot of people are pretty excited about it. A Speed Champion set, 76906, the 1970 Ferrari 512M. Two more mentions up to eight with an E-score of 2.1. The E-score dropped two tenths, and that's because in part this set is also not expected to retire at the end of this year. I think it dropped off the Brick Fanatics list a couple of months ago. It will have a pretty long shelf life for a Speed Champion set, but it is still at the $20 price point, and it's my favorite looking of the $20 price point, eight stud wide Speed Champions, but the longer shelf life will definitely hurt it in terms of investing and reselling post-retirement. Now on to a Brickhead set, Eve and Wally. One mention up to six total with an E-score of 2.2. The Nintendo Entertainment System, also six total mentions, this time an E-score of 2.3. This is a very new set. It got five mentions in the last two week period, so up to six total at an enthusiasm score of 2.7. This set looks amazing. It is $370 for 6,100 pieces, which is great, and that's consistent with the other large Ninjago City sets. Brickset does say that 19 of the minifigures are exclusive, but when you look at the parts inventory, I won't do it now, but when you look at the parts inventory, none of the torsos are exclusive. Not that these minifigures are overly exciting anyways, so the minifigures aren't the selling point on this set, and for me, when it comes to minifigures and exclusive, I'm really focused on the torsos because that's where all the important details are. Sometimes in the legs, if you get lots of good hip and leg and toe printing and dual molded, all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, it's the torsos. Let's take a quick look at the details of this set. There's so much going on. I like the open space in the middle. Some people have complained about that, but I really do like that open space. I think it makes the aesthetics and the playability of it very inviting, but I don't like how bulky the gondola is. I wish there was a way they could have done that with either thinner pieces or maybe something that was core as opposed to brick belt. The vehicle itself that you ride in looks fine, but the track and the rollers are very bulky. Now on to another Star Wars set. This is the ATTE Walker that came out last year. Three of the nine minifigures are exclusive, including Commander Cody, and this set looks really good, but it is $140 for under 1,100 pieces, so very expensive, but it does have a 4.6 on brick set, and it does have a 2.4 e-score on my table to the left. And the minifigures, though, are are really good. There's Commander Cody. The clone troopers look great with all of that printing and detail, really refined detail, really tight and sharp lines on these minifigures. I like the muted colors on the gunner clone trooper, and of course we don't care about the battle droids. Two more mentions for this set, the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower. It's up to five, but it dropped down to an E-score of 1.8. This set just dropped off the retirement list. It's gonna be hanging around at least another year, very, very long shelf life. This one's gonna be pretty rough when it comes to investing and reselling. 40516, everyone is awesome. Another set that got some rumors that it would probably retire at the end of this year, but now it is not. One more mention, an E-score of two. All 11 of the monochromatic minifigures are exclusive. A lot of great parts and minifigures in this set. Now on to this Ideas set. Set, which is basically also an art set. Two more mentions up to four with an enthusiasm score of 2.5. This is the Vincent Van Gogh Starry Night. This set is amazing. A new set, 40649, the upscale Lego minifigure. Four new mentions, so first time on this table, and an e-score of 2.8. A lot of people are very, very excited about this set. I think it will do well in retirement for investment, but I'm not that excited about this set. Yeah, it looks cool, but I feel like after a little while on the shelf, I would be like, all right, well, it's a plain old minifigure, which is nostalgic, but I'd like to see more action and more detail like the Star Wars dioramas or the Ninjago city sets. This set I do love, 40650, the Land Rover Classic Defender. $15, 150 pieces, a good minifigure, and a great build. New to our table, four mentions with an e-score of 2.5. A couple more of the game console sets. First is the Atari 2600. Three mentions with an e-score of 2. It is no longer on the retirement list. And then new on the list is the new Pac-Man Arcade that has some pretty good function and I guess kind of playability. Three mentions, but only an e-score of 1.7. 76218, the Sanctum Sanctorum, the Sanctum Sanctorum. Say that five times fast. One more mention, only up to three total and only an e-score of 2.3. Eight of the nine minifigures are exclusive. Pretty good set in my opinion. I've talked about this one a lot and y'all know I love it. The City of Lanterns. Two more mentions up to three with an e-score of two, but it has a 4.6 rating on brick set. I love this set. We don't know how long it's going to be on the shelves for. I still think it's
it's flying under the radar. It's a great set in my opinion. And one reason why I think it's a great set is because of all the modular components and all the playability with it. This picture really shows that off. Here's a couple of pictures of some different designs. This is pretty close to the main design, but then from that to this is pretty neat. So there's a lot you can do with this set. Look at those brick built plates that they're above the little Lego shop. Love this set. All right, now on the table, when I scroll down here are the next five BrickLink designer program sets not going to be available for the crowdfunding process until February of next year. Therefore, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but they all got one more mention up to two with the e scores of 2.5. They look good overall, just like the previous ones. I do want to show on eBay. Oh, and my Rakuten automatically popped up. Don't forget, always use Rakuten, always save as much money as you can. But if we look on eBay and look at the previous BrickLink designer program sets that are reselling, they're all going for about double their original price, if not a little bit less. They're a pretty good investment because if you buy some of the more expensive ones, like the Venetian houses, you paid, I think it was 300, might've been 350. You sell it for 600 after all the fees and everything. You make a decent profit on one unit. And next up is 21056, the Taj Mahal. Still not retiring yet, but this is a great architecture set. $120 for over 2000 pieces. Of course, the pieces are tiny. 4.1 on brick set and a 2.5 E score on my table, but only with to mentions this one is great because when it comes to architecture you want them to be amazing to look at and this detail looks fantastic from that view and this kind of minifigure scale view looks really really good i am not big into architecture sets I, I i love them i just haven't got into collecting them yet and this might be my first that looks so good and of course it comes apart as expected and then a little bit of nod to some interior detail to me, this set is a really special set. Might be a longer hold time, depending on how long it's on the shelves, but it should do very well in retirement, in my opinion. Jurassic Park, the Brachiosaurus Discovery, another mention up to two with an E score of 2.5. There's a lot that I don't like about this set. The tree stinks and the dinosaur is not my favorite, even though it is the largest. Because it's the largest dinosaur, it'll actually probably do well long term. 21044 Paris. First time this set has been mentioned this calendar year. It got one mention with an E score of three. Fox Lodge, one mention with an E score of two. Tales of the Space Age, this newer idea set. One mention with an E score of two. Ooh, the Disney Hocus Pocus, the Sanderson Sisters Cottage. What a great idea set. I'm glad this is one of the idea sets that Lego selected to put into production. It's got its first mention in E score of two, but this set looks amazing. Look at that detail in there. Really, really cool. Really well done. I love the color scheme. Reminds me of the, I forget what they called it, but it was like the old house or the, the rundown house or something like that idea set that a lot of people liked. They got the 10,000 votes and it almost made it to production, but Lego decided against it. I think one of the last few that they cut that round. A three in one creator set, the pirate ship, one mentioned with an E score of three. 40643, the Jade Rabbit, one mentioned with an E score of one. The next small creator botanical set with just a few flowers is this Lotus Flowers. E score of two. The Disney duos, the next up in the Disney 100th anniversary series that Lego is doing. This looks really, really good. It's early, but I think this one does really well in retirement. It's got its first mention. It did get the E score of three in that first mention. 71419, Peach's Garden Balloon Ride, an E score of two. A Ninjago set, Destiny's Bounty, Race Against Time. I was about to say Race Against the Time, but it's Race Against Time. And one mention with an E score of two. This Star Wars set, The Mandalorian. N1 Starfighter. First time it's been mentioned for investing and reselling this calendar year. Just an e-score of two. I agree. Not one that I'm looking at for investing and reselling. It's very expensive at $60 for 412 pieces and four minifigures. The four minifigures are really not that special. Ah, yes. The 332nd Ahsoka's Clone Trooper Battle Pack just came out and we are all very excited about this set. Not only does it have the four great minifigures that come in these Star Wars Battle Packs, but it also has the Swamp Speed which doesn't look great, but it certainly meets the mark well enough that I think people will like having that too. This is a cool set. I really don't care how long this one is on the shelves. It's going to do well in retirement. A few more left on the table, and then we'll get to my top three and a couple of honorable mentions. 76407, the Shrieking Shack and Whomping Willow. 76958, it only has an E score of one, but I actually like this one a lot. I don't really care about the dinosaur in this one. It's not special, but the Jeep looks really good. And then this is the biggest and the best in the 30th anniversary Jurassic Park wave that just came out. I think it was like five or six sets total. This is the visitor center. One mentioned with an E score of two. There's a lot that looks great in this set. 
But for me, it is a huge disappointment. Yes, the dinosaurs are good, but the visitor center itself is a disappointment. It's $130 for 693 pieces. I know price to part ratio doesn't make sense at all for this set. Look at the back. There's just so much missing space or missing detail. In my opinion, there's suggestion of much larger space and a lot more going on from the way the set is designed and angled like in this picture right here, but there's really nothing going on once you get through those two front doors. And therefore, that's a big disappointment for me. I wish, honestly, if they had made this like a $150 set and added that detail and really finished off the final design and final product. Last one on this table is this Monkey Kid set, the Monkey King Ultra Mech, which looks awesome. And actually, this one might do okay. Let's go to my top three. First one here, the Moss Eisley Cantina. I already told you all about it, and I am totally biased. I love this set. I'm putting it in third place for me. And number two is this set right here, the Brickheads, Eve and Wally. Let me find it on the table again. Six mentions with an e-score of 2.2. I think this one is flying way under the radar. It is a really good looking Brickheads. If the character that is being designed in the Brickhead style is very easily identifiable, then I love it. And I think that that helps them do a lot better. And these two characters, you look at them, you know exactly what they are. And the other thing is that there have been a lot of reports in the videos I've watched of this set being sold out at the Lego stores on the regular. Before we get into my number one set from this video, I want to throw out a couple of honorable mentions. Ninjago City Markets, I don't know how well this one's going to do in retirement. If we look at the first one in this series, it was $300 and Brickset says over $700. I think it's a little more. I think it's even closer to a thousand, but it's the first in this series. And so nobody knew how popular these were going to be. And so of course, there's a lot of people that are going back saying, oops, I missed the first. I want the first. If we look at the city docks, $230 and brick set says 584 still pretty good but of course slowing down and then this set which is still out and it's been out since 2021 we don't really know i have it i haven't built it yet a lot of people are thinking it's going to do okay but each one that gets released in this series tapers off two more honorable mentions starting with this one the sanctum sanctorum 250 dollars for over 2700 pieces it has a 4.6 on brick set with 151 ratings it is like a modular building but with a bunch of great minifigures the price is pretty similar to a modular building but again you get a bunch of great minifigures with this set i think this one is flying under the radar and will do very very well modulars and superhero minifigure sets some of them can do quite well look at these minifigures the ebony maw on the left the iron man spider-man Wong, scarlet sinister strange and oh i forget his name carl mordo oh yeah and then dead strange yeah, these minifigures are great. Honorable mention to this set, one that I want to look more into and really keep a close watch if we get a 2024 retirement date. Oh, and don't forget, my videos are for entertainment purposes only. I do not provide financial advice. You got to get that from somebody else. My last honorable mention is this Tales of Space Age. No minifigures with it. A very simple set. It is so artistically well done. Space related has a lot of realism to it. And those NASA sets do really well. But I think there's a lot of romanticism when it comes to space travel and, and the space frontier in this set that I really like. The colors are faded and the nice bright colors and the warm colors. You look at it and it makes you want to look far off into the heavens and, and learn more about it and be a part of it. And plus, you can break these up and hang them as four individual elements on the wall or hang them as one unit all together. Really, really well done. I commend the fan designer on this set. What a great idea. You know, we all look at it and say, wow, that was so simple to come up with, but nobody else did. And this person did $50 for 688 pieces. I think this one does well. Of course, if it stays on the shelves forever, like the uh, treehouse, then, you know, I would be changing my tune. On to my number one set in in this video, Vincent Van Gogh art set, Starry Night. We don't have many previous art sets to go off of to figure out how well these are gonna do, but this set is only $170, and I think is quite good. Many years into the future, people will look to a set like this and say, wow, not only is that Lego, but it is a wonderful thing to look at and to put on a wall somewhere or you know just have as an art piece. And when you zoom in and you look at these details, great prints, but also, most importantly, all of these details are made with just plain old Lego bricks and pieces and how those are layered in there to get the look and the feel of the actual art piece 
is really well done and of course when you zoom back and look at it you know it really has that impressionist feel one of my favorite sets that lego has out right now i haven't started buying this one yet because we don't know the retirement date and i haven't been even able to find it on sale when a good purchase opportunity comes to this one i am jumping all over it all right that's a wrap on this video thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one